Hi, welcome back to the first law of thermodynamics and physical chemistry. My name is Kevin Tolkoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the last video, we looked at how to calculate work, heat, internal energy, and enthalpy for an isothermal process. Another process that we can get is something called an isochoric process. Now, with an isochoric process, that implies that the change in volume is zero, meaning there's no change in volume, right? Okay, the volume is constant. Okay, now we talked about many videos ago when we talked about PV work and introduced it. That any time you have um, no change in volume, there's no work that's done, right? And the reason for that is delta V is zero, so dV is also zero, right? If we have a delta V from you know, some very large change in volume, if we take an infinitesimal fraction of that delta V, dV, then that also has to be zero, okay? So when we look at the definition of work, negative integral of P dV, I don't care what the bounds are. I mean, if you wanted to say it like this, it's V1 to essentially V1, but dV is zero. So this is zero, the whole integral goes to zero, so the work is zero, no PV work for an isochoric process. However, remember, we have this first law of thermodynamics that the internal energy is equal to the work plus the heat. Well, if the work is zero for an isochoric process, then that implies that delta U has to be equal to the heat, okay, at constant volume because it's isochoric. So remember, anytime you have a, a variable that's held constant, like in this case, it's, it's um, isochoric, meaning volume's constant, a lot of times for some of the variables, just to indicate what you're dealing with, you tend to put the subscript right here of the variable that's held constant. So in other words, I'm saying the internal energy is going to be equal to the heat when the volume's constant. Okay. And now what's the heat going to be? Now, there's two ways to do this. Now, if you've seen partial derivatives in thermodynamics, which is actually a, probably in your course a chapter after this, or maybe it's in the same chapter depending on the book, um, that's what this is over here. Now, I'm going to do that in just a minute, but I'm just going to basically tell you what the heat is for this process, and then we're going to explain why it is. If you haven't seen partial derivatives yet, don't worry about that. You will see it, um, but just bear in mind that you may not have seen it, so it might be a little foreign to you. All right. In any case, the heat at constant volume is going to be the number of moles times the heat capacity at constant volume times dt, and you integrate that from T1 to T2. Okay. Remember that what we talked about, remember we said that the heat capacity at constant volume is equal to the change in, that should be a Q, the change in heat at constant volume over dt, the change of heat with respect to time. So if you multiply both sides by dt, right, then you ultimately get this expression right here that dq, constant volume, is equal to Cv dt, then you integrate both sides and you get the heat plus times of moles there, okay? So that's where this comes from. So in other words, if you have an isochoric process, you can't use Cp. Right, because it's not a constant pressure process. You have to use CV, okay, because it's a constant volume process. So the number of moles times CV times DT integrated from T1 to T2, that's the heat at constant volume. Now, because work was zero and the heat is equal to the internal energy, we can also say we can also say that the, the internal energy is equal to this integral, n times the integral of Cv dt from T1 to T2. So that knocks out the work, the internal energy, and the heat. Now, what I'm going to do now is explain why this is the case. Why is the heat at constant volume um, the internal energy right here? And the way it comes out is something using total derivatives or total differentials, which was explained or is explained um, in a future video. Okay. Basically, if I want to find the integral of du, which is just delta u, what I do is I take I take the derivative, the partial derivative of u with respect to v at constant t dv from v1 to v2 plus the partial derivative of u with respect to t at constant v, dt, from t1 to t2. Okay, I'm not going to go into the heavy-duty mechanics of that right now. 
You'll learn it later, but just you'll have to trust me on this, that this is actually the expansion, the, de the derivative form of internal energy right there. Okay. Now, you're just going to deal with this like a normal um, set of integrals. Okay. It's isochoric. dV is zero. So this dV is zero right here, right? That's why I put a zero there. So this whole integral right here, this first one cancels out, and all you're left with is the second one right here. Now, there is an identity that you do need to, to realize is whenever you have the partial derivative of u with respect to t at constant v, this is essentially the heat capacity at constant volume. So anytime you see this right there, you're just going to substitute in cv for that, okay? And then you'll have to also multiply by n in front of it, okay? So this is cv dt. And that's where this comes from. So when this whole first integral cancels out, my delta u is just equal to this integral right there, n times the integral of cv dt from t1 to t2. And that's essentially just the heat, okay? When you multiply heat capacity times, te times temperature, okay, in integral form, that's just the heat. And since we're at constant volume, it's q at constant volume. Okay, and that's why those two things are equivalent to each other. That's why the heat is equal to the internal energy. Now, I also want to deal with enthalpy here, and I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did in the last video. Okay, I'm going to say here, okay, delta H is equal to delta U plus integral of VDP plus integral of PDV. Okay, remember I also have this delta H is equal to delta U plus NR delta T. All right, I also have that. Now, again, Notice the following, okay? We're dealing with, ultimately, an isochoric process, okay? Now, there's actually two ways you can go about finding the enthalpy. Well, we already said dV was zero, right? It's isochoric. So that whole integral is zero because you're multiplying times zero. So that means that you can either use delta H is equal to delta U plus the integral of V dp from p1 to p2, okay, or you can use this. Now, the question is, what do you want to use? Well, if you use this form right here, remember that using the ideal gas equation of state, volume is equal to nRT over p. So then you'd have to plug this in to, for this, integrate with respect to p, you know, and then you'd have to know the pressures, right, because you'd be integrating from p1 to p2. However, since you already found the heat, you already had to know T1 and T2, right? So why not you just use this formula, right? You already know T1 and T2, so just take T2 minus T1, that's delta T, times R times N, and then just add delta U. To me, that's a lot simpler of a process, okay, just using this. There's really only one case where you're going to have to use this bottom set right here, and that's the case where you have an isobaric process, which is actually what we're going to look at in the next video. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of um, understanding of calculating all the functions for an isochoric process. Like I said, on the next video, we're going to look at an isobaric process. So my name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos. Thanks a lot.